What I'm going to go through today in five minutes is just a little bit of wine tasting, a little bit of Chardonnay, a little bit of Merlot. I'm not going to be able to go through the whole bottle. We can do that at three. And I'll go through, in these 15 years, what I've seen as the islands, what, what the state is right now, and uh, what can be done going forward. So back up until even five years ago, um, we had all kinds of automation uh, vendors, hardware, software, implementation-wise, batch, non-batch, custom, uh, um, you know, co company-created uh, implementations. And out of all that, uh, uh, all those choices, what we uh, as Genentech typically have gone with is, is custom-built for our manufacturing areas. And uh, as you can see, um, typically it's been a DCS. We've had uh, a lot of flavors of them through the years. Um, and then for fill finish and utilities, uh, those are again the islands uh, that we've had, and they're predominantly PLC based. And for PR&D, uh, we've gone with the vendor's custom platform. So. The vendor standard platform would be like, um, you know, a building automation system that typically give with Landis and Gear or, or a Rockwell system or a Siemens system. And for the custom platform, Braun, for example, would have their own offering of a, you know, a control unit, DCUs. Applicon has its own controllers and software, et cetera. And Unicorn with uh, GE. So that's typically been the situation for uh, PR&D for um, in the past. And really, in my opinion, uh, what, what is driving these uh, selections for us is uh, process knowledge, um, cost, support, and validation. So where we are now and you know, in the last couple of years, lots has changed uh, for the good. Um, the, the, the 300 pound gorillas are starting to surface, uh, so all of the small, smaller companies are, are not as predominant in, in, in our selection process. And what we've also noticed is a lot more collaboration between what we call an automation vendor or solution provider with the, the core process knowledge vendor. So for example, to us, GE would be Life sciences would be the um, guys with the process knowledge, and um, Rockwell or Emerson, et cetera, would be the automation vendors. So a lot closer collaboration and ties uh, between them. For example, Applicon, Braun, uh, up until a few years ago, like I mentioned, they all had their own custom offering. Well, now they're offering uh, their um, product on a Delta V platform, on a Rockwell platform. So that's great. So things have changed slightly now for us. We still go with stick build for manufacturing. But luckily, the last two, which is fill finish utilities and PR&D, we're starting to see that the vendor standard offering is not a custom offering. It's kind of our standard you know, automation selection, too. It's Delta V, it's Rockwell, et cetera. So that's great. And of course, there's a widespread prevalence of uh, OPC, which is fantastic, because that gets us to kind of have some kind of bridges between the various islands. Uh, short note there that we, as the end user, have even now uh, uh, believe that we have led some of these integration efforts. And hopefully, going forward, um, we can see some of our automation vendors, and so et cetera kind of be the leading uh, group in that. Uh, some examples, Mavericks, it's our little code name at Genentech for a uh, GE sub with a Delta V offering. We, um, uh, GE subs were, um, came with the standard wave instrumentation and also, I don't think it was an Omron, it was uh, another controller. Um, the last time I worked on Omron was probably when Larry Ellison called me to work on his yacht. No, seriously. <laughs> um, so 
we needed something with Delta V or Rockwell, so we went ahead and you know started working on it a couple of years ago. Um, G firm, that's again our code name for um, merging some of these islands of automation <coughs> even within Delta V by a common uh, database that has all our process data. It's called PDMS, Process Data Management System, unlike NES, Manufacturing Execution System. Um, NovaFlex, a couple of years ago, 2008, working with our Nova Biomedical partners to uh, define the requirements for their OPC server and have it uh, stream data into Delta V. At that time, it was basically myself, Paul Smith from, from Nova, for those who, who some of you may know him, and uh, a couple of Matricon folks, but uh, really, uh, these are some of the areas I think um, our automation vendors we'd look forward to um, taking lead steps on and, and not the end user. Future, in my view, uh, there'll be fewer $300 million kind of uh, $300 million facilities. Um, Todd said his was there. I asked him any others, and he said probably not. So that seems to be the general trend because um, capacity is, is pretty much at max right now, um, or we have enough capacity. Um, I see a lot of uh, some of the older facilities getting refurbished. But most of the uh, uh, activity is going to be in pilot plants and labs. Again, that's my view. Uh, I, now I'm with PR&D, but before I was with manufacturing, but that's what I feel. Um, and and the, the key areas we're going to need to see is uh, speed, flexibility, plug and play. I'm sure Barbara will talk more about that. Uh, reduced install costs. So when we have these plug and play units, and we got several of them, you're not talking fives and tens, you're talking hundreds. Uh, when we start to buy a lot of these licenses, and at, at any given time out of 100, we're only going to use 50, uh, we will have to uh, make some wise choices when it comes down to cost if you're going to pay a lot of licensing cost. Was I subtle about that? Okay. Um, <clears throat> integration of metadata with core process data. So we have all these islands. And you'll see that in my next slide, even within Delta V. We're not talking just utilities and facilities, PLC-based islands. We're talking within core, upstream, downstream processes. We've got islands. So what is it to us as an end user that bridges those islands is integrating our metadata. We, it's OK. Let that control system do what it's doing and you know, get a bioreactor going for 14 days or get a purification process done in a day. But we want that data that we put in, what did we run, what samples did we run, what uh, media did we put in, the metadata, we want that integrated. We assume the control system will do its job to get that run going or complete it, but what about the input that we need to uh, give to specify the complete uh, experiment? That's what we're looking for. And the last bullet is integration across sites and continents. So, our world is shrinking. We've got uh, instances where uh, a, a product is uh, deployed, the same product is deployed in California and it's deployed also in Europe. We want them at some point to get integrated. We, we, we don't want it, I mean, we don't want the islands. So, so the integration of the islands would be that core uh, Process, uh, process data along with the metadata. Okay, I said enough. So <clears throat> I think what will help us a lot will be uh, continuing to go ahead and forge strong partnership with our process vendors because they have the process know-how, and also the peripheral vendors, the Novas and. Uh, um, um, Vendors like, um, sorry, like Nova, okay. Um, so islands will exist. Okay, we're not gonna be able to get rid of these um, different implementations of not just uh, different controller types, but the core software implementation. So they're gonna be there. It's a myth if that's gonna go away. Um, so the, the focus should be the soft bridges between the islands. 
and these are really the data entry and extraction. So I already uh, mentioned this about uh, uh, our partners Finesse and Sub, that we have GE Actor units. Now they're coming also with a Delta V uh, platform, not just the Unicorn. It's kind of Delta V on top of Unicorn as we understand it. But they're islands, they're not talking. We need them to talk, not from an execution standpoint, this is not manufacturing execution system. We want the data that we uh, use to kind of specify the experiment, that to come up at a high level. Um, partner with ODBC, so really database and, and web uh, viewing into our systems. Uh, that is huge because more and more it's not just the end uh, kind of on the floor person who wants to see what's going on with the plant, but uh, uh, um, basically senior management wants to see. And, and we can't have terminal services clients on everybody's laptops and desktops to go and see what's going on with the process. We need a, a solid web cloud kind of view. Okay, um, I'll give a a bottle of wine to whoever can tell me what the what, what is what? Okay, that's a complete waste of time. <laughs> okay, I'm talking about low level standards. So, you know, defining how to write a phase and defining how to write a unit of it. Come on, it's not gonna happen. We've tried it, we've tried it within Genentech. With the changing of the guards, those standards will change. Besides, who's going to be there to maintain them? The end user is not going to be maintaining them. If the OEM vendor or, or um, the you know, uh, automation vendor is going to be able to maintain them, does that dictate you know, locking down code and all that? So what is going to help us is, is working on interfacing those at a high level. Thank you.